Hi, I'm John Miller. I'm a GT racer in IMSA, SRO, at the Nürburgring, Kerventic races, Asian Le Mans, all over the world. Uh, I also coach in the Ferrari Challenge Series, both in the US and abroad. We're here today at CXC's headquarters in the Motion Pro 2 simulator, and today's lessons will apply to any simulator, but especially to those who are CXC owners. First things first, you wanna have a nice high quality setup. And what does that mean? It, well, it's a few things like having a high quality direct drive steering wheel that gives you a lot of feedback, a lot of feel. Then you, next, you wanna have really good pedals, it gives you good braking feel and feedback, good throttle feel. And one of the easiest ways to do that is to get a turnkey package with somebody like CXC Simulations in this Motion Pro 2. So once you get into the sim, you wanna make sure that your seating position is correct. And there's a couple different things you wanna pay attention to once you sit down. So first thing, you want to adjust the pedals to where you have a nice bend in your knee and you're able to get full extension, full brake pressure, full throttle and clutch usage without your legs being extended too far. You want your arms to be able to reach the wheel. I kind of measure it by putting my arms straight out and making sure my wrists break over the wheel. This is actually maybe a little too close for me. I'll push it a little further away. There we go. And then just making sure that you have full range of motion on the wheel from lock to lock. Clutch, brake, and throttle, all appropriate with a little bit of bend in the knee, and I'm ready to go. All right, so up next, if you're on a CXC Motion Pro 2 or any other sim with the seat belt tensioner, make sure your seat belts are nice and tight and adjusted correctly, just like in the real race car. Tighten them down, shoulder belts, lap belts, and good to go. So next up, if you're on a sim with motion adjustability, make sure that it's adjusted correctly for your preferences. Second, we've got brake pressure. Again, adjust to your taste. And finally, the vibration setting. Adjust to your taste and your preference settings. What you may like may not work for your friend and vice versa. So I recommend taking a few minutes to play with these, uh, test out a few different settings and find what works for you. Next up, choose a steering wheel. Make sure it's the one appropriate for the car you're driving in the sim. If you're on a CXC sim and you wanna share your data and your telemetry with your teammates or with your sim coach, all you need to do is push this VB sim button right here. Next up, before you jump into a session in iRacing, you wanna set the track conditions and the weather. You have a few different things you can play with here, like humidity, temperature, wind speed, time of day, and starting track state. One way to do it is also to set the track state and weather to be completely static so that it doesn't change throughout the session. Now, this isn't natural to how you would actually drive because obviously the weather and the track state changes throughout the day in real life. However, it's a good way to get a baseline for a car and a track that you've never driven before or that you haven't driven in, in a while. Once you've got a good baseline and you're kind of in the window, then I would go in and create weather conditions that are likely to match the weather conditions of the real life event that you plan on racing. So if you're gonna be racing in the morning, set the weather conditions to match the time of day. And if you're gonna be racing there in, in the summer, you want the temperature to be a little higher, those kinds of things. So you can create uh, the environment that you want within iRacing before you go and drive. And if you find that it's not working for you, you can always jump out and make a change to those track conditions, but it's all doable within iRacing. The next thing to adjust is the force feedback strength. Now that will vary from car to car in real life, just as it'll vary in the sim. You can adjust it via the bar there in the force feedback settings on the menu. And you wanna find something that matches the real life car based on uh, it, whether it has power steering, uh, adjustable power steering or no power steering at all. And again, this is kind of to your taste and to your preference. Uh, and you can really make this, the wheel difficult to turn with more force feedback or easier to turn to mimic power steering with a lower force feedback setting. So moving on to car setup. Now we are racing the 488 GT3 Evo in iRacing because we don't have the Ferrari Challenge car specifically. So we have to try and do some things to this car to make it match or at least approach the feeling of a challenge car. Some of the things we can do are to adjust the brakes. So what we do is we dial the brake bias forward and we raise the ABS settings. We can also add some weight to the car in iRacing. On the top right there, you see weight penalty. You can add some weight to the 48 GT3, and that will affect the car's balance in the corners, 
and it will elongate the brake zones in the GT3 car uh, to mimic more like what you have in the Challenge car. Unfortunately, we can't add horsepower to the GT3 car in iRacing. Uh, obviously, the 488 Challenge car has quite a bit of horsepower, but we're really trying to mimic the brake feel and the handling feel. So we, we like to add weight, we like to adjust the brake pressure settings on the bias and the ABS by increasing those uh, with a lot of front bias and some extra ABS settings. We can also do things like raise the car up a bit, uh, do some things to take away some of the grip in the corners by raising the ride height, softening the spring rates, things like that. So again, we're trying to mimic more of what the 48 Challenge car feels like by detuning the 48 GT3 a bit and uh, making the braking feel and the, the handling mimic more like what the challenge car is like. Now, again, it's a bit of a compromise here, but uh, there are some things we can do. And we've created a setup that we think really uh, gets pretty close. And so if you wanna download that, it's in the, the link is in the description below. Today's lesson is round three of the Ferrari Challenge North America Championship at Road Atlanta. All right, time for a little bit of a track intro, track walk, so to speak, here at Road Atlanta. So. Pulling out of pit lane, you're immediately gonna go start going uphill. You wanna respect the blend line here, just like at every racetrack, and have traffic coming at a really high rate of speed over to your left. As so we approach turn three here, it's a blind rise entry here. And this is one of the first critical parts of the track where you wanna really set up onto the left side of the road here and turn in early enough that you use a bit of this curb. Now, depending on your car setup and depending on how big the curb feels that specific weekend, you may end up using a lot of curb and running all the way over where the car actually gets a little bit light and goes over the edge of that curb there and then lands. Or you may want to use a little less of that curb or avoid it completely. That's something you're going to want to play with um, both in the sim and in real life once you get there. Uh, as you know, like any track, how much curb can you get away with using? At Road Atlanta Turn 3, generally you want to be using a good bit of that first curb. Now we start going down the hill, kind of through this Nürburgring feeling like section. A lot of trees, a lot of elevation change, a lot of high speed nature to the road here. You want to get left as you approach here, and this will be a fifth gear entry flat out downhill through these next S's. You really want to set up nice and tight to the left here and turn in early, almost before you can really see the track coming into view with enough steering angle input that you're able to get the car down to that first curb on the right and over to the next curb on the left. And really where you turn in up at the top of the hill is critical into getting the car lined up correctly so that you're not out of sync and you're not breaking too late for this next section. Now we're at the bottom of the hill. If it's raining, this is where the, uh, the water tends to pull up. There's a lot of rivers on the road here uh, in real life. So be aware of if you've got a wet road Atlanta, which you can sometimes deal with. In the dry, you wanna be using the right side tires right up against the curb on the brakes, nice and hard initially, but you don't wanna hang on to too much brake pressure too long here because it's actually a much faster corner than what it feels like. And it's uphill a bit, so the hill helps that slowing down effect. You don't have to touch the brake pedal quite as hard to get all the deceleration that you're looking for. It'll be, go down a couple gears, it'll be third gear here. Don't wanna use too much of that inside curve because it can upset the car, but you do want to unwind the wheel, open up the hands and use quite a bit of that track out curb. As you can see, it allows you to use more radius and carry more speed through the corner if you can get comfortable using that track out curb. Now it's a bit of a risk because it does tend to upset the car if you don't get it at the right angle. So start to play with that curb, use more and more of it progressively. As we get down in here into turn six, you can see off to the left there, we've got the 200 board and then a set of white lines, hashed white lines on the road right in front of me. That's kind of my good reference point. I try to break hard, but maybe not 100%, maybe close to 80%, a little bit early. And I try and trail off to carry big entry speed, big rolling speed through turn six. Ultimately turn six is gonna be a third gear corner. You don't want to downshift too early though, because you'll be coming down from fifth gear. You want to downshift kind of right at the apex. You'll track out, go back to power just for a moment. You might get to full throttle, but by the time you get to full throttle, it'll be time to brake again for turn seven. Turn seven is probably the most overdriven corner on all of Road Atlanta. People try and brake too late in there. They try and get to throttle too early. This is a critical corner because it leads onto the longest straightaway at the track. So, Break a little earlier than what you feel you want to do here. Uh, don't overcharge the entry. 
It's gonna be the second gear corner in this car. You're gonna turn in, try not to hit the apex curve too much to upset the car at the entry, and then track out all the way. At the track out, you can use quite a bit of this track out curb, both in the sim and in real life. Again, use it progressively, step up to it slowly. Don't go right to using all the curb on the first lap. But as you start to look for lap time, you can start to unwind the wheel sooner and use more and more of the curb. What you need to be careful of here is the hook slide back into the wall. It's a really common mistake coming out of turn seven and it can lead to a crash if you get it really wrong is where you drop tires off the edge of the road and you have a little bit of wheel dialed into it. The moment you drop that left rear off the road and you got wheel dialed in and you got throttle dialed in, the left rear is just gonna spin up and it can shoot you off to the right. And there's just no runoff room over there to the right. So we see that as a, a common mistake here coming out of turn seven. And that's normally caused by overdriving the entry. So just keep that in mind with turn seven being the most critical corner on, uh, on the track here. And why is it the most critical corner? Well, because it leads on to the longest straightaway and into the best passing zone down here into turn 10. I don't know how we go from turn seven to turn 10, but I think they consider these turn eight and nine here on the straightaway. I'm gonna break hard into the corner here, into this chicane, use a lot of curb there, use a lot of curb here, squeeze back on. And then this next final corner, the downhill is gonna be set up where we place the car as we come up the hill here really uh, will dictate how much speed we can carry through the downhill in the, uh, in the Ferrari Challenge car here. So up ahead, you're gonna see there's a, a white, red, and yellow uh, marks on the bridge. In real life, uh, there's gonna be some similar markings on the bridge there. And those are your visual reference cues on where to place the car under the bridge. You don't wanna be too far to the left or too far to the right. Um, you do want to keep in mind that depending on uh, which series you're running in or which pit lane your series is using on that weekend, there are two entrances to pit lane. There's one to the right and one to the left. So that's another thing to keep in mind here, um, both for yourself and when you've got traffic around you, that people may be pitting. And both of those pit lane entrances are uh, probably the most treacherous pit lane entrances on the calendar here <clears throat> at Road Atlanta, both uh, because they're blind and they're so high speed and because you have to manage traffic, uh, guys who may be diving to pit lane uh, at the last second. So be mindful of the pit lane entry, uh, place the car about middle of the bridge under the C in Fox factory on the sim or under the, uh, the red marking on the bridge. You'll stay full throttle under the bridge. There is a little bit of a bump here. You'll stay full throttle all the way down the hill here. You wanna set up nice and wide. In the challenge car, I don't think it's fully flat to the floor, full throttle through here. In the GT3 car it is. Just be mindful of that inside curb and you're gonna use all the track out at the exit to get a good run down into turn one. We'll talk about turn one momentarily as well. You wanna break again early and a little bit softer rather than going in there and charging with a big threshold late braking application. You don't really wanna be into the ABS here. I'd rather break somewhere around the 100 board or maybe just past the 100 board. Uh, or if you're feeling really confident, you can maybe get down to the end of where the grass is. That's also the end of the pit lane wall uh, for the left side pits. Um, that's about as deep as you wanna go though, because you don't wanna to carry too much brake pressure because it's a really fast entry speed corner. Uh, you've got an uphill section right after the, the, uh, the corner begins, after the apex, the track goes uphill big time. So the car gets, uh, compresses into the track and really grips up. So again, not a big, huge brake application. Uh, play with an earlier, lighter brake, an earlier turn in to really carry that entry speed up the hill. And you can really find a lot of lap time and a lot of confidence in turn one if you get good with your, your brake point and your brake release by not over slowing. As you can see, here we go, big uphill into turn three the blind section and that's a bit of a track intro to road atlanta here we'll do a couple laps at speed and show you what that looks like all right down the hill here try to be flat out get the tires up to temperature fifth gear down two gears try not to touch too much of that inside curb squeeze on use a lot of that outside curb 
Looking for the 200 board, brake lightly at the 200, try and carry big speed, early brake release, back to full throttle, down two gears, brake a little early, turn it in a little early, Be mindful at the exit there, the curbing and the dirt. Try not to drop two tires there, take a breath here. This is the only place on the track to really take a breath, relax for a moment, wiggle the fingers, stretch the shoulders, wiggle the neck a little bit, get ready for the next hard threshold braking zone here. Best passing opportunity just before the 100 board, hard full threshold into the ABS, release, get to the apex, full throttle, little lift, back to full throttle, up under the red mark on the bridge there, stay full throttle down the hill, up to fifth gear, little lifted turn in, squeeze back on the full throttle, we'll start a flying lap here at Road Atlanta. Brake just at the top of fifth gear there, down to fourth for turn one, maybe fifth gear next time by, but you try and carry big apex speed through there. Line entry to turn three, light brush of the brakes, down to third gear, turn in, use a bunch of curb at the apex of turn three, back to full throttle, try and hug tight to the left there, up to fifth, as we stay almost full throttle down the hill there, big catch. Trusting the car, trusting the setup in the aerial. Getting the tires nice and warm. Hopefully next lap by the, uh, the tires will be up to temperature. We won't have that big slide. Brush the brakes at the 200, maybe a little deeper than the 200, down to third gear. Try not to overdrive turn seven. And full throttle out onto the back straightaway here. Only place to really breathe, take a break, rest the shoulders stretch the neck a little bit, start to think about the next brake zone ahead. We're braking just before the 100 board to get the car slowed down in time. Full threshold ABS, stomp on it, down all the gears, turn it in on the brakes, trail the brake in full throttle, grab third gear, stay full throttle, manage the wheel spin up under the hill there. Big speed down the hill, little breathe off the throttle, try and manage the rear. The car's gonna move around a lot here. Let's go for one more lap here at Road Atlanta. On the brakes, down to gear, off the brakes, and squeeze back on progressively on the throttle. Up the hill here, we're gonna do a light brake. Down to third gear, turn in, use a bunch of curb at the apex of three on the gas, stay full throttle. Keep it tight to the left, little breathe off the gas, and then back to flat immediately. Use the curb at the entry. Try not to use too much of the apex curb, but use a lot of that exit curve really opens up the radius. In pretty good shape there, up to fifth gear. Break just inside the 200. Down to third gear, full throttle for just a moment. Don't overdrive it. There we go, squeeze back on, manage the oversteer. And then take a breath here. The only place to really rest, take a breather, gather your thoughts, <clears throat> check the mirror for traffic, check your vital signs on the dashboard, make sure everything looks good temperature-wise. Look at your lap time, probably uh, the predictive might be looking pretty good at this point. And then brake hard, trail brake all the way down to the apex. That's about as deep as I can go without missing the corner. Position the car perfectly under the bridge so that as you come under the bridge there on the final part of the lap, you can stay full throttle and finish the lap at Road Atlanta, probably one of the fastest, gnarliest tracks in all of North America. All right, so some final thoughts here on the CXC Motion Pro 2 in the uh, Ferrari 48 GT3 slash challenge car at uh, Road Atlanta. This is definitely one of the fastest, gnarliest, scariest tracks in, uh, in all of North America. It's high speed, it's high risk, uh, but high reward for sure. So we've got some of, the, uh, some of the biggest commitment corners in all of North America as well. Turn one and turn 12, the first corner and the final corner Road Atlanta. Um, we really have to, to find the confidence in the car and confidence in our own skill level and really come into the weekend knowing the track, knowing where, the, where to place the car because there are some blind sections of the track where if you can go in with the confidence of knowing where to place the car, uh, you'll be ahead of the game big time. There's also a few corners where uh, if you are patient and you don't overdrive the car, that will pay dividends in the long run, especially coming out of turn seven onto the back straightaway. You can create opportunities for yourself to make passes 
uh, by being a little bit more patient than the drivers in front of you or behind you. Uh, and if you can be stronger coming out of those critical corners, that will make all the difference in the race for you. So uh, really focus on that while you're uh, training on the sim and uh, good luck at Road Atlanta.